Okay guys, so here we are on video two and this time we're looking at the reduction of carbonyl compounds using NaBH4. And in the specification there's two things we need to do. Describe the reaction and then outline the mechanism. So we're just going to take a little bit of time to think about that. When you describe the reaction, you need to be able to write an equation. You need to be able to say what the reagents are and then you need to describe any particular conditions that need to happen in order for that reaction to take place. Does it need a catalyst? Does it need a certain solvent? Does it need to be in acidic conditions? Does it need to be under reflux? Those kinds of things. And then for outlining the mechanism, outline we're looking at the different stages that there are. So not just the start and the end, but the bits in between. So you should have more than two stages in your outline. And also that you're showing um, the active bits in that reaction. So you might not show um, necessarily everything that's in the overall equation, but you're showing what's taking part in each stage. Okay, so let's start by just having a look at what we've done so far so that we can see where this is going to fit in. So we've looked at using an oxidizing agent to get from a primary alcohol to an aldehyde and that if we don't um, do distillation then that would go all the way and oxidize to a carboxylic acid. Um, and then with a secondary alcohol, our oxidizing agent will take it to a ketone, but that there's no further oxidation that can happen in that case. So what we're looking at today is reduction. So what we're going to be looking at is reversing this reaction here using a reducing agent or reversing this reaction here using a reducing agent. So turn the aldehyde back into the primary alcohol and the, or a ketone back into a secondary alcohol. So let's just think about the oxidizing step again. If we have a look at where the word aldehyde comes from, we've got dehydrogenation of an alcohol. So what we were doing in that case was taking two hydrogens away. So now when we're looking at the reduction, going back to the alcohol, we're going to be putting those two hydrogens back in again. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Here's the oxidation version. So we've got these two hydrogens and the O from the oxidizing agent give us our extra product water and our aldehyde which is the alcohol with those two hydrogens taken away and now we're going to reverse that this time here we've got the notation for a reducing agent and we're going to put those two hydrogens back in again so we're going to put one hydrogen back in here one hydrogen back on there and we have gone from our aldehyde, in this case it's ethanol, to our primary alcohol, ethanol. We also need to be able to describe that for ketones. So again, our reducing agent, um, and you can see I've got the three carbons here, and I've just kind of straightened those out in the product here. And we're gonna put a hydrogen on there and a hydrogen on there. So that's the two hydrogens back again in that case. So just to highlight that, we need to balance that up. Um, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two hydrogens. And here we've put our ketone reduced to our secondary alcohol. So a good thing to do now would just be to pause the video and ask yourself what product would be formed when propanal reduces and what product would be formed when butan 2 own reduces. And then you can just test that your 
um, you've, you've got everything that we've done so far. Okay, so our reducing agent in this case has quite a long name, sodium tetrahydroborate. Okay, but luckily in the equation, we can just use our H in the square brackets as our notation for um, NaBH4. And here's a condition that we need either water or ethanol as a solvent in order for this reaction to happen. And hopefully you'll be able to see why that's important when we have a look at the mechanism. Okay, so um, the NaBH4 is a source of H minus ions. Now these are hydride ions. And I was just thinking that's the word I didn't put in the glossary and that might be quite a good one. So you could add that onto the end of your glossary. Um, so here we've got a hydrogen atom with a proton in the nucleus and the electron um, in the shell. And that would be unhappy because it has an incomplete outer shell of electrons. And what we have done so far is to get happy, we have taken away that outer electron, making H, the H plus ion, the hydrogen ion. What we're gonna have a look at now is our alternative would be to add an electron to complete the outer shell. And because you've added a negative electron, you've made H minus the hydride ion. Okay. Right, so this mechanism is a nucleophilic addition mechanism. Now, you have looked at another type of addition mechanism before when you took an alkene and added either hydrogen bromide or bromine to make that saturated halogeno alkane. Yeah, it took me a long time to think of that. Okay, so that is a type of addition reaction, but that is electrophilic addition. And it would be a really good idea now to pause the video, have a look in your AS textbook, and just remember how that mechanism worked. So if you've reminded yourself about electrophilic addition, then you'll be ready to take that one step further and we're gonna have a look at nucleophilic addition. So rather than using an electrophile, we need a nucleophile. So a nucleophile is attracted to an electron deficient center. So that's either something with a positive charge or a partial positive charge. And the nucleophile needs to have a pair of electrons that it can donate and that pair of electrons is going to be used to form a covalent bond. Okay, so here are some uh, bits of that full definition for a nucleophile. And let's have a look at how that works. So I've taken ethanol as the carbonyl compound that we're going to use in our mechanism. And here we have the H minus the hydride ion, and we said that it had its own electron and an extra electron. So there we've got the pair of electrons. And that this is attracted to an electron deficient center. So we're gonna have a look in this molecule now. Hydrogen carbon bonds and carbon carbon bonds are nonpolar. But what we have here is a delta positive charge and a delta negative charge on this bond because oxygen is a lot more electronegative than carbon. Okay, so now we can put in the first step of our reaction, of our mechanism. So these pair of electrons are attracted towards the electron deficient center in this molecule. And they're gonna head for that carbon and that is gonna form a bond between the hydrogen and the carbon. 
Now if you just did that you'd have a carbon with five bonds so what's going to happen here is that the pair of electrons in this bond are going to drop themselves onto the oxygen there. Okay now this is a bit of a Mrs Watts thing so what I'm going to say next so if it confuses you forget it but I always think about that this is a bit like sort of like a vacuum pipe from a vacuum cleaner the curly arrow that goes from a lone from the lone pair of electrons into an atom and it's almost like it goes on there sticks to it and then goes and pulls that in and makes a bond between those two whereas this other type of curly arrow is one that's going from a pair of electrons in a bond and I think of that curly arrow as just dropping plonking the pair of electrons on top of that atom there. Okay so let's have a look what we've got here then. We've made this bond with a pair of electrons from the hydride ion and we now have a negative charge and the pair of electrons from this bond that have been dropped onto our oxygen. Okay, and now here we can see why we're going to need our water or our ethanol solvent. So, important thing about water in this reaction here is that it is also polar. So the hydrogen is slightly positive and the oxygen is slightly negative because oxygen um, has is more electronegative than hydrogen and we've got this pair of electrons going there and pointing towards the hydrogen and remember that pair of electrons is going to come, become the bond that joins that hydrogen onto that oxygen and then the pair of electrons here in this bond get plonked onto that oxygen there. Okay, so make, again we've got those two types of arrows. The ones coming from a lone pair creating a bond and the bonding pair of electrons being plonked on here to make a lone pair. So in our final step um, we've got this bond that we created between the oxygen and the hydrogen. This is the hydrogen, let me put that in green so you can see that that's the hydrogen that came from that water molecule and then we've got the rest of the water molecule left over but we have the pair of electrons that this curly arrow plonked on there um, and so that means oxygen has its own electron that was in the bond here but it also has hydrogen's electron so having an extra electron that's going to be an OH minus iron. Okay now with all mechanisms um, they have to be learnt and learnt very accurately and the examiners are going to be looking for um, lone pairs, charges, partial charges and then looking very carefully at where curly arrows start and where curly arrows finish. Okay and that is our reduction of carbonyls using NaBH4.